Welcome to Methods and Madness. I'm John Lehman. We have a great guest with us today. We have Stacy Greco from Sentient Decision Science. And Stacy's going to share with us a little bit of background around ethnographic research and how technology has helped ethnographic research come back to the forefront in terms of methodology. Um, I'm very interested to learn, Stacy. if you could just give us a little bit of background of how ethnography has changed over the last uh, few years uh, to really become a part of a forefront in a, in a research methodology. Sure. Um, so as you know, when ethnography was first used back in the 1980s, um, I believe one of the earliest case studies in market research that we often refer back to is the Xerox work that was done at the park. The, uh, Palo Alto Research Center for Xerox um, back in the 1980s. And at that time, they were just starting um, to look at ethnographies used outside of the field of anthropology and bring it into a market research environment specifically for product development. Um, so that was, gosh, I guess um, 30 or so years ago. Um, check my math on that, John. I, I might be off. Um, but when it was... Um, when it started being used in the market research setting, um, it was done in a very uh, rather cumbersome way where teams of researchers would go out into the consumer environment and uh, videotape and audio tape and document the environment um, thoroughly. Now, times have changed, and we often are working with clients whose budgets don't support research programs um, of that magnitude. So maybe they need to do some um, product testing, or maybe they need to get just a quick read on the consumer environment. And so they have shorter time frames and smaller budgets to work with. So we've really had to adapt the methodology of um, ethnography in order to suit today's client needs. So very often today, an ethnographer will go out into the field alone um, without a camera crew and without note takers um, and just bring along a few simple um, implements and tools to help us collect the data in the field. Um, one of the tools I use a lot is my iPhone. Um, very small and handy, easy to carry around, um, and I use this to collect video and audio as well as digital photos. Um, so the iPhone is a very inobtrusive tool um, that I can bring into the consumer environment without um, sort of making them too uncomfortable um, because it's a really small, familiar tool to them. Um, we also use flip video cameras, which um, I don't have one handy, but it's actually a little smaller than the iPhone. And so when the field, particularly in the retail environment, um, conducting shop-alongs, for instance, um, we can be really inobtrusive just kind of holding the camera like this as we shop along with consumers. And so today, the bulk of research, um, ethnog ethnographic research that we do at Sentient, um, is really conducted by a single ethnographer, sometimes accompanied by a client, um, and with a variety of very small and obtrusive tools to help us collect data. And because of the advances in technology, we're able to get very high quality video and audio and digital photos um, to help both with our analysis as well as bringing the consumer voice back to our client. Well, that, that's fantastic. Thanks again for being on our show, Stacy, and we'll look forward to catching up to you again soon somewhere in your travels. Thanks, John. Take care. I'd like to extend a special thank you to Stacy for her time today and welcome you back to Methods and Madness, where we'll continue to chase down methodologies that are changing our business environment and helping customers every day.